Hello, members of Peace Lutheran. I have some updates for you from the call committee. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Alex Kaufman. I'm one of the members on the call committee. So, some big news. Last week, we interviewed with our final candidates, and we have chosen two of our top candidates to be shared with you both electronically and in physically, physical mail. The mail will be going to those who normally receive mail. Everybody else will rec be receiving an electronic copy of our two top candidates. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to contact Carol DeLancey at his email address. Uh, moving on, after this stuff is sent out on the 29th, uh, we will be having a congregational meeting May 3rd. This meeting is going to be hosted via Zoom. This is going to be fun. I've never done this before with having a voters meeting online. But it's going to work out. Everything's going to be good. So if you have any meeting uh, concerns or questions about the Zoom meeting that's going to be happening, please also contact Carol DeLancey. We will be having more information coming out to you soon regarding that. If you would prefer a paper ballot, you can have that. Please let Carol or another call committee member know so we can get that to you or email the church office or even call the church office. Just got to let somebody know and we'll get that to you. Uh, once again, if you have any other special accommodations or questions, please contact Carol DeLancey. Thank you. Well, good day. I'm Larry Corson, the pastor of Peace Lutheran Church, and I thank you for joining us today as we come together to worship our Lord in the midst of this, well, still continuing very strange time where we don't know what the future is going to bring, what changes are going to happen. We still know that we're, we're living pretty much in isolation. But we want to be here to help you and to address you and, and answer any needs that you have. And so on the welcome screen, you can see you can contact us by uh, uh, emailing Peace Lutheran Church, and I can pick those up. There's a phone number there. I'm in the office uh, Monday through Thursday morning, Saturday and Sunday mornings, and you can give me a call. I'd be happy to talk to you. Uh, you can also uh, pick up the church website at peaceaa.net. We're glad that you're here. We've come today. In, in our own individual places, wherever we are, to worship the Lord. So let's begin. Let's begin with the call to worship. This is the good news which we proclaim to you. Jesus Christ is raised from the dead. Walk in the light of his love. Live in the light of his teachings and his love. Worship the one who overcame death. Celebrate the triumph of our Lord. Continue, we bring our praise to God.
Thanks, Juliet. Continue now as we turn to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we celebrate your love. You defeated sin and conquered death through the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. We recognize that without the cross, we would have no reason to live. We would have no hope. Thank you, Father, for giving us hope. We do not know what it was like to watch your Son die, but we do know you endured it because of your great love for us. And we are so grateful and worship Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. In his name, we pray. Amen. Let me read to you a very short psalm of praise, the Psalm 117. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you people of the earth, for his unfailing love for us is powerful. The Lord's faithfulness endures forever. Praise the Lord. So this is the point for the children's sermon. And, and today, when you're with your kids, you can take a moment and, and you can talk to them. And I'm going to put a few things up here. Uh, talk to them about, well, what kind of sins? What are sins? And, and what are the things that, that, that they might do that are wrong? And, and so maybe, maybe it's telling a lie. Or, or perhaps it's cheating. Or maybe it's taking something they're not supposed to take, so it's, it's stealing. And we could go on and on with that list. Well, how do we get rid of those things? You know, I can try to erase these. And that's not too bad, but if you take a close enough look, you can see that everything is still there. We can't erase our sins. We can't take them away. Only God can take them away. Only Jesus can forgive us. And so that's why we come to him asking him to forgive us and, and to welcome us in his family. And the good news, though, is that, that even if we lie or cheat or steal, God still loves us. That's why Jesus came, to take those things away and, and to welcome us into God's family. And so let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you that we're your kids. We thank you that you love us, that you are the one who forgives us and takes away our sin. Help us, Lord, to try to do what's right, to try to tell the truth, to help others, to give to help those who need, and, and help us, Lord, to live in your love because you love us. In Jesus' name, amen. So we continue with the readings today. The first reading, the history from the early Christian church, is Peter's Pentecost message. So Pentecost takes place 50 days after the resurrection. And the disciples have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the people have been attracted. They've heard the noise, the sound. And now Peter steps up to address the crowd. Then Peter stepped forward with the 11 other apostles and shouted to the crowd, listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem, make no mistake about this. So let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, to be both Lord and Messiah. Peter's word pierced their hearts. And they said to him and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, to your children, and to those who are far away and all who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time 
strongly urging all of his listeners, save yourself from this crooked generation. Those who believe what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day about 3,000 in all. This is the reading of the history of the early church. The next reading today, Peter, who we just heard from, wrote two letters to the early Christians. In his first letter, we are told to encourage, we're encouraged to live the new life of faith. 1 Peter 1, 17 through 25. And remember that the Heavenly Father to whom you pray has no favorites. He will judge or reward you according to what you do. So you must live in reverent fear of him during your time as foreigners in the land. For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And that ransom he paid was not mere gold or silver. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. But he's now revealed him to you in these last days. Through Christ, you've come to trust in God. And you've placed your faith and hope in God. Because he raised Christ from the dead and gave him great glory. You were cleansed from your sin when you obeyed the truth. So now you must show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters. Love each other deeply with all your heart. For you've been born again, but not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever because it comes from the eternal living word of God. As the scriptures say, people are like grass. Their beauty is like a flower in the field. The grass withers and the flower fades. But the word of the Lord remains forever. And that word is the good news that, you, that has been preached to you. This is our New Testament reading. Today's gospel, Luke chapter 24, 13 through 35. We go to that first Easter and we go to the evening. But that afternoon and evening is the two disciples walk back to Emmaus and Jesus meets them and talks with them. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. As they walked along, they were talking about everything that had happened. They talked and discussed these things. Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. But God kept them from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing so intently as you walk along? They stopped short. Sadness written across their faces. The one of them, Cleopas, replied, You must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that have happened there the last few days. What things? Jesus asked. The things that happened to Jesus. The man from Nazareth, they said. He was a prophet who did powerful miracles. And he was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and of all the people. What our leading priests and other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped that he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. This all happened three days ago. Then some women from our group of his followers were at his tomb early this morning, and they came back with an amazing report. They said his body was missing. And they'd seen angels who told them that Jesus is alive. Some of our men ran out to see. And sure enough, his body was gone, just as the women had said. Then Jesus said to them, You foolish people. You find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures? Wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his glory? Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself. By this time, they were nearing Emmaus and the end of their journey. Jesus acted as if he were going on, but they begged him, Stay the night with us. This is getting late. He went home with them. As they sat down to eat, he took the bread and blessed it. Then he broke it and gave it to them. And suddenly their eyes were open, and they recognized him. And at that moment he disappeared. 
they said to each other, didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? Within the hour, they were on their way back to Jerusalem. There they found the 11 disciples and the others who'd gathered with them who said, the Lord has really risen. He appeared to Peter. Then the two from Emmaus told their story of how Jesus had appeared to them as they were walking along the road and how they recognized him as he was breaking the bread. This is the gospel of our Lord. We continue, we confess our faith using the creed of the apostles. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This is the point in our service where we, we bring our offerings to God. And obviously today, as we are scattered in so many different places, the offering we bring is, is our commitment to the Lord, our commitment to spread His Word, our commitment to love and serve others in His name. And yes, we encourage you to continue to send your offering so we can continue the ministry of peace to grow God's family. Let's pray. God the Father, giver of life, may the works of our hands bring you honor. May the life we live reflect the risen Jesus, the word of life. And may the service we offer be inspired by Jesus Christ, the breath, the giver of life. In his name we pray. Continue our worship now as, as we bring our praise to the Lord in the message song.
Thanks, Juliet. So I don't know if you can see the, the picture up there or not. It says Easter crisis 2020, Easter services canceled until further notice. Easter 2020. What a crazy crisis this has been. The fact that, that churches throughout our nation and throughout the world have closed. I, I've never seen or experienced anything like this in all my years of ministry. To think that on Easter Sunday, when, when the church is packed many times over, well, I was in here with Alex, who was recording, and Matt, who did the music, and that was it. It was the strangest Easter that I've experienced. A crisis for so many, but it's not the first Christ, crisis to happen on Easter. In 1916, in Dublin, Ireland, the people there wanted independence, and they took over many of the buildings. They occupied many places. The, the British army invaded and squashed the rebellion, but the public opinion turned against the British, and this led to the independence of the people of Ireland. In 1920, there was a conflict between the king and his cabinet at Easter time. And this conflict eventually led to a change in the creation of a constitutional monarchy. But let's go all the way back. 2,000 years ago almost, to that very first Easter, and the crisis that brought. The powers of Jerusalem thought they had crushed what they felt was a certain rebellion that was coming from Jesus of Nazareth. He was dead and buried, but God raised him for the dead. And public opinion began to change. The first Easter was a liberation, as Jesus, who was dead, was liberated from death and brought back to life. It was a revolution. As this condemned criminal becomes the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It was a transformation of freedom from sin and guilt and shame and death. A freedom that God gives. It was transformation of the world. And so what is the change? Suffering gives way to joy. Fear gives hope. Chaos yields to peace. Hate is overcome by love. And death is replaced with God's gift of eternal life. The second Easter crisis takes place 50 days later. It's Pentecost. This is the spring harvest festival for Israel. And the Jewish people have been scattered throughout the Mediterranean world. Many of them came back to Jerusalem to celebrate Pentecost. This is the day that the disciples received the public outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And the people heard the disciples telling them, talking to them in their own native languages. And then Peter began to speak to the crowd and proclaim the gospel message. The first public proclamation of the resurrection. Peter said, with the help of lawless Gentiles, you nailed Jesus to a cross and killed him. But God released him from the horrors of death and raised him back to life. For death could not keep him in its What a shocking message. The book of Acts goes on to tell us what happened. Peter's words pierced their hearts. And they said to him and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Those words... The message of the resurrection created a crisis for the people. They were challenged to repent. To repent means to make a complete reversal. To go in a whole new direction. And they were forced to decide. Would they go with the authorities and the powers of Jerusalem? Or would they follow the Messiah? Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Peter encouraged the response when he said, this promise is to you and to your children. 
and save yourself from this corrupt generation. This is the turning point. Bigger than the Declaration of Independence, bigger than the Civil War, bigger than the Civil Rights Movement, these were all crisis points and turning points in our country. But nothing in comparison to the crisis and the turning point of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Well, the message to the disciples that day was welcome. And 3,000 people, 3,000 people were baptized. Their lives were changed. The book of Acts describes their new life this way. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to sharing in meals, and to prayer. And from that point on, the gospel began to spread throughout the whole world. So let's come back to today. And how do we respond to the COVID Easter of 2020? Do we try to hold on to the things from the past, the things that we thought were so valuable and so precious, the things that we counted on? Or do we let go of the things that failed to deliver? James, the brother of Jesus, wrote one of the letters in the New Testament. It's called the book of James. And in that letter, James tells us that every good and perfect gift comes from God. And we should certainly thank God for all the gifts that he gives to us. But I wonder, how many times are we guilty of making a God out of the gift and we forget about the giver? Romans 8, 28 tells us that God can work everything out for our good because he loves us and he's called us to be his own. I wonder, is God using this crisis to expose the false gods in our nation today? You know, I saw an ad this week. It was an ad touting that science is going to solve our problem. Science will come with up with a, 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 a cure the COVID virus, it will come up with the vaccination, and we just need to trust science. Well, I certainly hope and pray that that's the case. And, and that kind of science is definitely a gift from God. But we can't put our hope in science to save us. We, we as a nation have become very caught up in, in what experts want to tell us. And, and we listen so often to those experts thinking that they know best. But think about how expert opinions have changed so dramatically over the last four, five, or six weeks. The experts can't save us. The, the, our government is telling us the things that we should do and should not do. And, and some of their advice has been really helpful and very good. And hopefully we'll work out to prevent more spread of the virus. But we need to remember on any level of our government that our leaders are just like you and me. Sinful people. They, they don't have the perfect solution. We cannot count on the government to save us. We as Americans have, have made a God out of health and wealth. We want to be healthy, we want to be wealthy, we want to have all the things that we want and be able to do all that we want. Well, that certainly has failed us. Recreation, entertainment, sports, things that we put so much time and energy and focus on, those things are all shut down. They can't give us what we need. Only God remains with us. Only God can save us. And God today, like Peter back then, is calling us to repent, to return, to put our trust in the risen Lord. You know, we live in a time where America has become more and more of a secular society, and sometimes we as Christians get caught up in that. If you've turned away from God, or you've maybe just been ignoring Him, it's time to turn back. We also live in a time where so many people are living for themselves, living for the moment. But 
the world is not all about us. We need to find that gift of new life in Christ. We, are, we get so narcissistic, loving ourselves, wanting to serve our own desires. But Jesus tells us greatness is in serving others and in following him. Have you put faith in yourself? Have you counted on your own talents and abilities to see you through everything? Maybe it's time to put our faith back in Christ. Because he's the one who has the power to save us. You know, none of us know how long this crisis is going to go on. And we really don't have a clue yet what the so-called new normal is going to be. But we do know that nothing in all of creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. He defeated sin and death. He invites us to bring all of our cares and our concerns to him. And we can count on him to be with us, to help us, to give us a new life. You know, we, we have a choice. We can live in fear of the unknown, or we can live in faith in the one who knows us, and who loves us, and gave his life for us. Isn't faith the better choice? Amen. Let's pray. Holy God, we marvel at the mystery of Christ's suffering, death, and resurrection. We are awed by his obedience, astonished by the death of his love for us, and by the amazing display of your power over the forces of sin and death. You are a God of wonders. You restore that which has been lost, bringing new life from, which, from that which is old, and offering healing and hope where there appears to be only sickness and death. Your miraculous power continues to work in our lives and in our world. Set our hearts on fire with your love and open our eyes that we may recognize your presence in every person, in every situation, in every place. Father, we remember today those who are in need of your help and healing. Lord, we all know people have been affected by the, cri the crisis created around the coronavirus. Those who are ill, those who are suffering, from loss of employment, those who are having difficulty dealing, dealing with isolation, and we pray that you'd be with them. We especially ask you, Lord, to be with Ellie, Evan, Cindy, Megan, Cheryl, Stephanie, Lonnie, Jonah, and Amy. Be with them and the Oftenbergy family and the Burgos families in, in Nebraska. Assure them, Lord, that you are with them, that you'll help them through all the challenges they face, Lord, we ask you to be with, uh, with Jessica Towers and her family following the death of her mother to the coronavirus last week. And we ask you, Lord, to give them the hope, the promise, the victory of the resurrection, to know that death is the gateway to eternal life with Christ. Father, we also pray that you continue to be with our call committee as they have uh, continued to work and interview and are about ready to bring uh, recommendations to our congregation for future pastors to serve here. We ask you, Lord, to guide them in their final stages of preparation and then be with us, the people of peace, as we ask for your spirit to lead and guide us in the call that we place. Father, we pray your will will be done. And we ask that your spirit rest on us all. Lord, we pray for our nation in the midst of this COVID-19 crisis. We ask to give, that you give wisdom to our government leaders, that they will make good and wise decisions. We pray for all the medical personnel, the first responders who are helping and serving others. We especially ask you to be with Stephen, Rebecca, Becky, Karen, Eric, Lindsay, Stephanie, Chris, Erica, Becca, Todd, Heidi, and others that we know. Watch over them. Keep them safe. Lord, we also pray for the men and women who serve our nation in the military. As it as continues to be a challenging time throughout the world. And we ask you to be with Matt, Joe, John, Connor, Eustace, and Eric. 
Keep them safe, Lord. We pray that you would continue to bless our nation with freedom, that we will be free to live in your in light of your love and to share your love with others. Now we come to you, Lord, in the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I want to thank you for being part of our service today. I pray that the week ahead is a great week for you. Again, you can contact us and we'll be happy to get back to you. We close with our blessing and our final song. The tomb is empty. And Jesus is alive. What will be our response to that good news? Will we flee in fear, keeping the news to ourselves, Or will we, or are we ready to give an account of the resurrection hope that is within us? In the power of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may you be emboldened to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And may the peace of the Lord be with you today. And always. Um, again, thanks for joining us. Juliet, will you plays for us our closing song of praise? Yeah.
that 